Today on Athlete Alchemy, we're gonna be experimenting with the Morton 320 drink mix, which Morton claims is a hydrogel. When you drink this, it forms some kind of gel in the stomach, which does something blah, blah, blah marketing. What it also says on the packet though, is that you're not supposed to mix it with less than 40 milligrams per liter of calcium. Why does it matter if there's calcium in your water? Well, it turns out that it's necessary for there to be calcium ions in the water in order for the sodium alginate and the pectin that are in the ingredients to form a gel. And apparently the limit on how much calcium you need might be 40 milligrams per liter. So we're gonna run two experiments. We're going to compare tap water mixed with this with water that contains a hell of a lot more calcium. And then we're gonna try to see what we have to do in order to get it to form a gel. Branching off that, we're gonna see what we need to add to actually convert it into a gel. And then lastly, we're gonna see if we can take this and turn it into this, which is a gel and has almost the same ingredients by just adding less water. Why would you wanna do this? Well, this actually costs half as much per gram of carbohydrate as this. So if you just wanna buy this and use less water, you can create create this. Let's get started. The instructions on the bottle say to first add 500 milliliters of water to this container. I have handy dandy 500 milliliters of tap water right here. Ooh. Fill one sachet. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Shake. And pour back into here to see what it looks like. It is still a liquid with some little clumps that formed, but it's syrupy. Okay, this is San Francisco tap water, which I measured has very little calcium in it. Unlike San Pellegrino, which has something like 200 milligrams per liter of calcium, which is significantly over the 40 that it says to avoid. I let this sit out and get more or less stale so we don't have bubbly drink mix. Second go with the pour of the sachet. Sachet? So that still has some bubbles in it. That's gonna come out like a motherfucker when I open it, I just realized. Maybe I'll, ooh, yeah. <laughs> I'll do this. Do we see any difference between the two of these? Unfortunately, it's still not really a gel. They're both liquid. Okay, now one thing that we can try is adding some acid to the mix. Making the environment a little acidic also helps both pectin and sodium alginate solutions turn into a gel. We're gonna add five grams of citric acid to each. So this is actually really fascinating to me. In this one, which was the tap water, remember we had those clumps? So the clumps, after adding the acid, formed into this lovely gel here, which does look a whole lot like the Martin gels in the, oh yeah, look at that. I mean, that's amazing. So there's that clump there. Whereas this one, was, we, we got all the clumps out. This is from the Pellegrino. There's no gel at all. It's just this syrupy liquid. I mean, maybe it's a little viscous. There's all these little bits of gel in here. You see that stick into the spoon? I don't know why that is. Uh, we gotta do some more experiments. This is just so fascinating. So I asked ChatGPT what the hell is going on here. And I think what's happening is because there's calcium in here, it's actually dispersing the sodium alginate molecules across the whole water and creating this cross-linking effect so that it, they don't form any clumps. And it's already forming a gel with the calcium, but there's not enough of it to form like a visible gel in here because there's 500 milliliters of solution. Whereas in here, they were not spread out nearly as much because of the lack of calcium. And it did form this pretty awesome gel as soon as we added acid. And it just seems to be getting bigger. Chemistry is so cool and so complex. There's a few ways that we can test that hypothesis. If we add more sodium alginate in here, can we cross some threshold until it really turns into a gel? Another is altering the pH to see if we can get it to a particular environment that's best for gelling, which is between three and a half and four and a half. And then another one is lowering the water content so that we just have a much higher concentration of the sodium alginate and the pectin in there compared to the total amount of water. This is one gram of sodium alginate. After adding the sodium alginate and leaving it to dissolve actually overnight in the fridge, we can see that it did start to form little bits of clumps in the one that had calcium from the San Pellegrino. There's a clump right there. But if we compare what happened to this one, which is just tap water with no calcium, now the whole thing is a gel. It's so fascinating to me. Like, this is the scientific method. 
at work. Granted, I didn't really know what was going on here with the calcium, but I thought that they were telling you not to add calcium because it would form a gel if you added too much calcium in the bottle. In fact, it was the exact opposite. What they were saying is if you add calcium, it won't form a gel in the stomach, which this does, tap water, just from the acid. All we did here was add a little bit of citric acid to replicate the conditions of the stomach a little bit more. So cool. So now what we're gonna do is ditch the San Pellegrino. Let's see what happens if we just add a little bit of water with a little bit of acid. Can we replicate their Morton gel? This Morton energy gel has 25 grams of solids to 40 grams of total stuff in here. So that's 15 grams of water to 25 grams of solids is 60%. The drink mix has 80 grams of solids. 60% of that is 48 grams. So we need 48 grams of water in our container. There we go. And now instead of going to a blender, I'm gonna use this immersion blender that I have. You can stir it or just go to a blender yourself. So you can see it's syrupy, but not exactly the gel that we want. So let's add 0.2 grams of citric acid. That's a tiny amount, I and mean, you can barely see that there. And another 0.2 grams. It's starting to get jelly. Oh. Oh. That's a gel, baby. Look at that. Wow. Look at that gel. Oh my. Oh. Science! Oh, it's so cool! Point, so point, point four grams. Point four grams of citric acid. That means it's a little bit harder for you all if you don't have this milligram scale. So go buy yourself a milligram scale if you wanna do this, or scale it up and, you know, put in like 10 of these at once. Uh, 10 times 0.2, that's two grams. And then you can do it on like a more normal scale. You can do it on a kitchen scale if you wanna do two grams. So go buy a packet of this, put 10 of them into a container, 48, let's say 50 uh, grams of water, 50 times 10, it's 500 milliliters. Perfect, you can use the shaker cup. I don't know how hard that'll be. Just, just use a, a container, put it in a blender, 500 milliliters of water, 10 of these, two grams of citric acid, and you'll get this lovely, Gel. I mean, that's just, oh, that's perfect. I think that's actually better consistency than the gels in here. I mean, let's, let's open this up and see. Okay, clearly these look a little bit different. They have a few different ingredients. This one doesn't have any pectin in it. Got some caffeine, we can essentially ignore that. And it has uh, gluconic acid instead of citric acid. Doesn't really matter, it's just a form of acid. It probably has more sodium alginate. Generally, the more sodium alginate it is, like the firmer, clearer gel you'll get. And this looks actually a lot more like the drink mix when we had more water in there, versus this one looks a lot like the Science and Sport Beta Fuel clone that I did last week, I think because of the pectin. Okay, check it out. So this is our Science and Sport Beta Fuel clone that we did last week. And this is our Morton drink mix turned into gel. I mean, they're pretty damn similar. This one is with gel and gum and xanthan gum. This is pectin and sodium alginate. And this is just the Morton gel, straight up sodium alginate. In terms of flowing, this one clearly is a lot firmer. Like, it's like jello. It doesn't really, doesn't really flow. This one flows for sure. This one also flows kind of in between. A little firmer than the science and sport. I think next week we'll have to test all three of these uh, on a run and in terms of how fast I can get them down and see which one I like better. And then you can decide which ones you like better. To me, I think the coolest part about the Martin drink mix turn gel is that it's just so easy to make. You saw there's like three steps. It's half the price of the Martin gels. You just buy these, put it in a little bit of water, put it with a little tiny bit of citric acid and you're freaking good. So let me know in the comments if you try this, if you try any of these three and how it works for you on an actual run or even on a race. If you're a real risk taker or you just really believe in science.